everybody. I'm just gonna wait a sec here uh, while I get set up. And then we're gonna start the dragonfly painting. Um, so I have opened the chat box. If you have any questions, just uh, write it up there and I will read them out and try to do my best to answer them. So I'm gonna start here. <clears throat> what I have on my palette already is a vermilion orange, a red, a kind of a cobalt blue, and some white. And we're gonna do the background first, the very background, the gradients there. So I'm gonna take kind of my biggest, flattest brush, this one here, and I'm gonna just take a dollop of blue, add it right on, and I'm gonna start mixing the red with it. So there's that. And we're gonna need it quite a bit because we have a lot of space to cover here. Okay. Hmm. I think I just need to make a little bit more paint. So I'm just going to add more red, add a little bit more blue. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, clean my brush. I'm going to make this secondary color here. Okay, so I'm going to take my orange, make a big dollop, we're going to add some red, and then we're going to add some white after we mix this all up, because we want more of a pink color. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's too strong with the orange, so I'm going to add more red. Okay. And we need way more white. There we go. All right. Hmm, that's pretty good. Okay. Then we're gonna clean our brush again. <laughs> There we go. And so I'm just going to do this dark area up here. And you have to decide at this time if you want to do the edges as the color wraparound or if you want to just do a black. I like doing black on all of mine. So I just paint on the front and then at the end I paint the wrap of the canvas with black. So. You just want to cover the surface and you don't want to add too much paint because you want it to dry in a reasonable amount of time because we want to paint over it. Long strokes to make it nice and smooth. And then I'm actually going to add some white to my purple to get this color here. And then I'm just going to work wet on wet. And then this color here looks a little bit darker to me, so I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to darken it up there. And I actually, I just need one darker, so I'm going to add even more blue. There we go. I sound like um, Bob Ross. Just a happy little amount of blue. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm going to add a bit of the orange pink area here. The peach. Okay. And you want to make sure to leave this section here uh, just blank because we're going to just add it 
cover it all in black. Covering it back and forth, long strokes. And then I'm going to add some white because this area here has a, quite a lot of white in it. And I'm going to bring it up while the paint is still wet. more white and keep bringing it up. And we're not going to do everything exactly on this painting. What I did was I removed some of the elements so that way we can make it a little bit easier and that way um, you can add them back in if you want to afterwards, but I want to make sure that this was more of an easy beginner's class as well. So it wouldn't be too hard for everybody. Okay. Make sure we cover it generously. Okay, so now we're going to mix these ones. I've run out of this color, so I'm going to make a bit more. What I'm going to do is just take more of my dark purple, add some light. And paint this area. I did not clean my brush this time because I want these two colors to mix. Oops. And I have a little bit of water and the water has just dripped. So what I'm gonna do is just clean it up. So I don't want these drips. There we go. And I'm just gonna blend them together again wet. And to get this exact color, I'm gonna add more white. Okay. And I want to add a little bit more white to do our beautiful sunset here. Okay. We've gotten quite a few drips on here, so I'm going to just fix that. There we go. And I'm going to just Bring my orange down a little bit further. There we go. And I actually just want to add, so I know it's quite orange there, but I just want to add a little bit of red. Let's make it a little bit more pink. So this is going to be this area right here. Okay. There we go. So we have our query in the back. I'm going to just wash my brush. I'm going to let this area dry and I'm going to do the bottom black part. And what I did was I put my black in a different palette altogether. Black, if it runs with your other colors, it can be really um, kind of toxic. It'll just wreck your colors really easily. So I try to keep it separate as possible. So I'm going to just paint the whole area here black. And we're going to just let this, this dry here. And then what I, well, the question a lot of people ask me is like, how do I know it's dry? So there's a couple of things that you can know. Like right now it's very, like you can physically see that it's very shiny and that it's very glossy. And so you know it's wet. And then after it dries a bit more, if you put your hand on it um, and you can feel that it's cold, 
then that means that it still needs to dry a bit more. And just make sure not to put too much paint on because we do want this to dry quite quickly so we can paint on top of it. That's kind of the trick there. Um, but yeah, if you feel that it's cold, that means that it still needs to dry a bit more. And feel free to use a blow dryer. If you do, and like if you put too much paint on and you do use a blow dryer, you'll actually see cracks. So you just want to make sure that it's a reasonable amount of paint, not, not too thick. And so I'm just bringing it up right to that line there. And I'm actually going to go over the line because I don't want any white. So just cover the canvas. There we go. Mm -hmm. Cover all the white. It's going to mix a little bit. That's okay. Because we're going to come in with our grass and we'll fix it all up. So just want to give this a minute to dry. I'm actually going to, so yeah, the whole background's done now. I'm going to do a little bit of my edges now. But you just want to make sure that you do not um, hit the front because it's still dry. There we go. It's easy black and black. My top is almost dry. I'm just going to quickly grab a blow dryer to finish it off. I thought it would be a little quicker, but just one second. Here, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just going to double check something here. There we go. Okay. Everybody who just joined, I see that a couple of people uh, joined a little bit late, and so we're just doing the background here. And what I'm going to do is this wasn't dark enough for me. You can still see a little bit of the white. You can't really tell on, cam on the video, but on the canvas, you can see that there's a little bit of the white peeking through. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a second coat of the black because I want it to be very, very dark at the bottom. There we go. And it looks like, let's do a test, it's a little bit cold, so I'm going to do a little bit more of the blow dry. I'm going to put my brush in there.
And so just, I just want to point out one thing. So I noticed here that this is quite a bit lighter than this color here. It looks like I, back in the day, I put some black in the top there when I was working in my wet on wet. So I just really like this color gradient right now. So I'm going to just leave that because I think it, it looks good. Um, next, I'm going to work on all the little grass to make this area here look more like a field. I'm going to take a very small brush. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to just take like a small brush like this. And I'm just going to get the tip wet with the black. And then I'm just going to work up. Hmm. And I think I actually need a smaller brush. I like things really detailed and finicky. So I have the teeny tiny brush. There we go. And so what I'm doing is I'm just putting my base at the bottom and then flicking up. And then that's how you're getting kind of the grass look. And it's hard to tell when it's so far away. Here, I'll bring it. But I'll do some and then I'll bring it closer to the camera. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just going to all blend in. It's a silhouette. So I don't know if you can see this section here. <clears throat> and so you kind of just want to do, you don't want it to be too linear. You want it to be like, um, you know, some long ones some short ones. Because grass, that's how grass grows. It's never perfect. And I even kind of do some uh, squiggly shapes. And you just basically want to cover the entire section and make sure that there is no straight lines because then you're not getting, it won't look real if you see any of the straight lines because in nature there's in a the field, there wouldn't be any perfectly straight lines in a silhouette in a grassy, grassy field. So this will just take a little while to cover this section here. And then next we'll work on the cattails. And then I do the uh, dragonflies last. You kind of just keep, and make sure you don't get too much paint on your brush because then you don't get the nice shape that you want. So I just want to make sure that you clean out your brush and get all the water off because you don't want to be dripping. How's that looking on the camera? Yeah, you can see it. It's not, it's not as close. It's just very small detail. Just kind of filling up all the space. Making sure you're covering that line. Some short ones, some longer ones. Hmm. Back and forth. I kind of do left, right, left, right. And then like one squiggly one every once in a while. And then I just try to fill in the bottom so you can't see that line. There we go. And I'm getting too much paint on my brush again, so what I'm going to do is just clean it off. Make sure it's nice and dry. And keep filling in this grass part. So this is getting a little bit thick, 
So just you want to make sure when you're painting the rest of it that you don't put your hand on it because then you'll smudge and then that's not a good time. Every artist has done that. I'm going to fill in a little bit here. You can't see that line. This part is almost meditative. Oh, there's a little bit here where you can see the line. Now after I finish this, I'll bring it up close to the camera so you can get a good look at it. Getting there, almost done. Perfect. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that's turning out today. All right. So I don't know if you noticed, but I'm painting my kitchen today. <laughs> so that way I can get good light from the bay window. <laughs> my studio upstairs is not um, very big. So I brought my computer downstairs so I could paint my kitchen for you guys today. See, and then I just got my finger in it. So you just have to be careful because you don't want to smudge. This is almost done. I'm just going to cover up that line a little bit more. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. So there we go. I've just added a whole bunch of grass and I've made sure that to cover up the line that we made initially. Okay. So we're going to let that dry. I'm just going to clean out my brush here. And we're going to do these long. Okay. So let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do last today just to make it easier for you guys. And you guys can add more cattails if you'd like. But what I did was I just made some lines initially. And then I went in afterwards and I added in the body of the cattail. So we just get some a good amount of paint on the teeniest, tiniest brush. And then you have to make sure you don't hit the wet part because that won't be good. So I'm going to just I'm just gonna draw it in. They're gonna be a little thicker than I have on there. Um, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's a nature. And I want another one there. I want a small one here. Okay. And I'm just kind of mapping out where I want them right now. And then keeping in mind, I want a dragonfly here, a dragonfly here, and one in this section here. So I'm going to move this cattail over. So I have enough room for the dragonfly. I'm going to do them a little thicker so that you guys can see them easily on the video there. Okay, so we did one, two, I'm going to do another small one here. And I'll do another one here. So one, two, three, four. And I'll just do five today. Another one, and it's really close to its friend. Okay. So I'm a little bit worried because this is quite, I did this quite thick. And I'm just going to blow dry it so that way I don't get my hands in it. So I don't want to wreck the whole piece.
So most of it is dry. I can still see that there's some glossy bits. So I know that there's still parts of it that are wet. Okay, so I'm gonna add in my cocktail body. So first I'm going to just round out my lines up a little bit to make it a bit thicker. I just wanna make sure you guys can see it on the camera or on the video. No. So I'm just gonna make my lines a little thicker. There we go. And then I'm just going to do kind of like a hot dog. A little hot dog shape there. Yeah, you can see that, okay. And then, Yeah, so you just have to do that for each one. So again, I'm just going to make sure that the line is nice and straight and smooth. And then I'm going to draw my hot dog. And this one. And then we'll add some more grass for the sections of the cattails. And you can make them as long. I like making them rounded, but I know some people too that make it kind of more blocky. So really, this is where you can use your own creativity, your own individuality to make it more of your own piece. Okay, I'm going to make that one bigger. I don't want it to be the exact same size as the one next to it because it's already taller. There we go. So I'm going to just Make it a little bit fatter on each side. Okay. There we go, and I just want to check so how we're doing for time. Yeah, we're halfway. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then again, we'll smooth out the line. My grass at the bottom is drying very nicely. There's that, and then we'll make a hot dog. This will be my biggest hot dog. And the largest one there. So then I actually go in and I kind of draw it with my paintbrush and then I fill it in. So once you add all the painting, you can't see it anyway. You can smooth out the texture. So no one will ever know. I want to make this one a little bit longer. Oh, it's pouring rain out. You never know with the weather lately. What's gonna happen? And they've been pretty good so far, but just to warn you, my cats might um, make a cameo appearance. They, they usually like to come in when I have a Zoom meeting of any kind, but it seems like they're sleeping right now. So that's kind of lucky because they like a lot of attention. Okay, so there's that one. I'm just gonna go back. I kind of want to make this guy a little fatter on this side. Okay, it's just a bit of a weird shape now that I've done more of them. Okay. Show you there. And then we'll just finish the rest of our cattails and then we'll add in the little bit of bush that is around the cattail, the cattail leaves. So again, I'm just gonna brush, I'm gonna wash my brush. There's too much paint getting on there. We will smooth up the line. I actually rest my hand on the painting. I don't believe there's a lot of people would recommend that, but I find it just really helps me steady my lines, and then my lines are quite good. I actually like painting flat a lot of the times too. It's really just a personal preference. 
So we'll draw in the, the shape. It's kind of a big one there. Here we are. Fill in the middle. And then I just make sure that you can't see any of the color through because this is silhouette. So I would wreck the illusion. So clean my brush. Almost done with cattails. Okay. So one thing I did on this one initially was I added little flower shapes as well. So let's see. So I have little flower shapes. I'm not going to do that today. So you can do that if you'd like. Um, just to save on time and to make it a little bit easier with painting because sometimes uh, people will get hung up on the little details and then they don't finish in time. We want to keep this an hour today. Oops, that one was a little bit too long, but that's okay. So we draw in our cat tail. Mm -hmm. It's just a little one. Okay, and then we'll do the last one. And we'll finish the grass. Come along quite nicely. Okay, so we straighten out the line. Just want to make sure that there's no questions. No, nope. no questions. Okay. And there we go. And I believe that they're going to be posting this online as well. So if you want, to, instead of watching it live, you can stop and start it in case you uh, need more time to finish certain parts. There we go. Then we map in the last one. Okay. I want this one to be longer just to give some variety. You don't want them all exactly the same shape because that's not how nature works. Some of them are closer, some of them are farther away. So they need to have a little bit of variety. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, dry it really well, and we're going to, oh, I just got red paint everywhere. That happens sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna do the little bushes here. And you just get an ample amount of paint on your brush, and you go upwards from the middle. Hmm, I'm gonna try this actually. You can tell, wow, these are quite wet. I'm going to pull down, but make sure that you come from the middle. So that way when you start at the base, it's nice and thick, and then as you go out, it gets thinner. You want to make sure that it's kind of in a fluid motion so that it looks like long grass. So we'll do a little bit on this side to make sure it has some grass coming out of there. And again, just kind of fill it. And also, I'm not just making them straight, I'm kind of wavy a little bit. And I'm actually using my pinky to stabilize my hand on the side of the canvas so they're not too wobbly and shaky. Okay. 
Do you have a one? Do you want to make some shorter ones, some longer ones? What's that? I'm going to just show you because they're quite thin. Upside down and then right side up. And there we go. So they have their grass. I just find it a little easier to do it upside down so you can get the right feel of the grass. And let's see. I'm going to do another one here. And then I'm going to do the bigger one. That one, I, it's um, picked up a little bit, so I just re, I went over the line. And here we go. These ones I'm, I'm making not as smooth as those ones. I think they look a little bit more realistic. As an artist, it's hard to paint the exact same thing every time. You always want to grow and do things differently. And there we go. And again, just making sure that you don't put your hand in any of the wet parts. I think that's like one of the most common things is to smudge with this type of painting is because we're leaving things wet as we're going around other elements. When I'm working on bigger pieces, I usually will let the whole thing dry or I will um, use a blow dryer. So that way I don't make any mistakes. A little bit of the... So that one I just accidentally made a, like a little dot. So I just made another piece of um, grass right next to it. It's great. It's really easy to cover any mistakes. Just want some more with the grass there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the one of the things is definitely you have to make it thicker at the base and thinner at the top, and that's what's going to make it look more real. Um, some of the classes I've taught, people really want. Oh, did you hear the thunder? People. Uh, try to make it the same thickness the whole way and then it doesn't look real. Um, so it's thicker where it's its base is and thinner and much thinner as it gets longer and farther away from the ground. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, I just want to add a couple more. It's not full enough for me. I'm really happy with that one. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes it just, a certain movement will just really work for you. Okay, let's do a couple more here. Couple thin ones. I'm going to wash my brush. Okay. And then next we'll work on the dragonflies. They're actually really easy to make. It's the same thing that I was using with the cattails where I draw it in. And then I fill it in. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just blow dry this because I'm going to put my hands right on the rest of the canvas and I don't want to smudge.
point at one thing. So on the video, it looks very black, but I don't know if you can see. Um, you can see some of the background. No, it's not showing up in the video, I don't think very well. But anyway, I'm going to need to do a second coat on some of the cattails because you can actually see the background color uh, coming through and I want it to be black, black. So I'm just going to cover that. But I'm just going to, for the purpose of this, this demonstration, I'm going to just um, blow dry it all dry so we can work on the dragonflies next. to get a little bit more black paint. There we go. And I'm going to draw in where I want my dragonflies with just a line. So I want one here. I'm just going to do a line. I want one up here. This is just a little one. And then here is kind of the bigger one. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw the little head on top of it. And just like with the cattails, I'm going to just fill it in. And I'll probably run into the same issue where there's going to be a little bit of the background showing through, so I'm probably going to want to do two coats. And then we're going to just draw the body. So the body, let's see what kind of shape is that? Just an oval shape. Again, because it's silhouette, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just make kind of a, I don't know, maybe a snake tail. Is that the right description of it? Um, use that, and then we just fill in. I'm just gonna, I have too much paint on my brush. I'm gonna fill it in here. There we go. I don't have the wings yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in uh, the bodies first and then I'll do the wings after. So again, we make a little circle for the head, fill it in, and then we make a little uh, kind of oval body attached to the head. This one I want a little bit longer. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. There's that. Okay. This one, I kind of want to make the biggest one. So I'm going to make his head quite a bit bigger than the other guys. And oval shaped body. Okay. And again, triangle for the tail. And all of these, I would recommend filling them again and again. But just to save on time, I'm just going to do one coat for the purpose of this class. And then, so we have our bodies all good. We're going to make the wings now. And hmm, my white is really messy, so I'm actually going to just put some new white. So, 
again, uh, we're going to draw in the wings first. And what I'm going to recommend is either blow dry the little bodies so that they're, they're completely dry, or just make sure that your wings don't um, pull any of, the, any of the black paint. So I'm going to just make some wings. And then I outline them afterwards. And the fact that the stingray paint uh, doesn't cover the background fully is to our advantage because I want it to look like wings so they're a little bit see-through. So I don't want them. I usually um, only put one coat on the wings so that way it, it looks see-through. Okay. There we go. I'm going to have to blow dry it. I need to put my hand in. the wings to balance. There we go. And then fill it in. But not too thick because you want it to be see-through. There we go. Just to keep you updated, it sounds like there's like massive hail outside. <laughs> In case you're wondering what that noise is, I don't know if you can hear it or not. Okay, so then we're, we got his wings. We were gonna do teeny tiny little wings over on this side. I'm just gonna uh, wipe off my brush. Okay, here we go. Outline them first. That one's not perfectly matched, but I will fix that. Oh, lightning. I don't know if you can hear that, it's so loud. <laughs> oh, my poor cats, they're probably hiding under the bed right now. They're terrified of the thunder. And the great thing about this is because it's picking up a little bit of the color underneath, which looks great because then it looks like actual wings. Okay, I'm gonna go over this side, and do these ones, draw it in. I actually want the wings to be a little bit bigger. Just fill it in. And we're thrilled that it's picking up some of the color underneath because then it looks see-through, it looks like actual wings. And then this one's still wet, so I'm actually not touching the body because I don't want to drag any of the black paint into my wings. Okay, I just want to check to see if we have any questions. Nope, I don't think we do. Okay. So I'm just trying to work around this wet dragonfly body. Okay, fill it in, and then what we're going to do is uh, outline them in black. And again, try not to use too much paint 
So that way we want them to be safer for one and we don't want them to take too long to dry. And they don't have to be perfect because they're just see-through little adorable wings. Uh, this one feels a little off, so I'm gonna try to balance it. Yeah, okay. Then I'm going to blow dry those guys so that we can just do the outlines and that's basically it, we're done. dry so I'm going to start on him first. This one's still quite wet so I'm going to give him more time to dry. Let's just see here. What I'm going to do is just take the new paint that I've uh, braced my hand so I can make a nice little line and just make sure the wing attaches to the body. Because right now I drew a lot of the wings and it doesn't have to be perfect. So what I did was I drew a lot of the wings right up to the body, but not touching the body. And wow, is it ever raining outside. Nice smooth lines. Some thin, some thick. It doesn't have to be perfect. For this one, I think it looks really nice if you don't have it perfect. Uh, where can I show you? So for this one, I didn't do the, you can see that the white goes on the outside. I actually think that looks really nice. But I know some people like their things to be perfect. I like them to be kind of fun, a little bit messy. Gives it some character. In my opinion. Okay. This guy's dry now, so I can work on him next. Here we go. I'm going to just do a little bit on this side. There we go. And oh, too much paint on my brush. Again, I'm just outlining the wings of the dragonfly. Oh, here comes one of my cats. Maybe he wants to help. Yeah, hey buddy. How's it going? Yeah, I'm just I'm just teaching class right now. I'm a little busy. <laughs> there we go. Then I'm going to just blow dry this guy because he's still wet. Outlining the wings, doesn't have to be perfect. And then again, connecting it to the body. Okay, so that's all outlined. And then lastly, we just need to, let's see here. I'm gonna take like a brush like this 
Uh, and once it's a little dry, I recommend take it on its side and then I would do the black just to finish it off. And you want to make sure that it has nice thick amounts of paint so it covers the canvas and you might want to go do two coats as well. Mm -hmm. Hey buddy. Surprised he's not hiding under the bed right now with this storm. And there we go. Yeah. That's still very wet. Okay. So there we are. Uh, so, oh, there's a couple things that I didn't include just for time. Um, we just have a couple more minutes here. Oh, we don't have it in Oprah jokes. Um, is I made like little uh, glowing balls. And so what I did was I just made a, uh, a solid uh, white piece with like a one coat of the white outside of it. And then I just added some little dots for stars. So yeah. But that's all. Thank you so much for joining me for my dragonfly sunset painting, and I hope you really enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, uh, just let me know. It doesn't look like any questions are coming through. Well, thank you so much. I'll sign off now. Bye.